So when it comes to the Detroit Red Wings and the 15th overall pick, we've had our discussions on the quote-unquote mainstream guys. Everybody likes to talk about TJ Ginla, everybody talks about Cole Eiserman. but when it comes to some of these European wingers, there's one in particular whose name I've been seeing a lot over the past few days be associated more and more with Detroit Red Wings fans. No, not the Wings organization themselves, but the fans. When it comes to the guys that have been shooting up Red Wings projected 15th overall selections, I've been seeing more and more talk about Michael Branstead Newgard. And there's a very good reason for that. And honestly, when I think about this prospect, I think about the profile, I think about what Steve Eiserman tends to value in these positions, Michael Brand said Newgard actually does make a lot of sense to me. Here's why he makes sense to a lot of other Red Wings fans as well. Brand said Newgard is 18 years old, 2005 October is the birth date, so he is technically one of the older players in this draft. He's a 6'1", right-handed forward, and his consolidated ranking right now is 12th overall. A bunch of outlets have him in the 20s, some have him in the top 10. His elite prospects ranking is number 15, which is exactly where the Detroit Red Wings are. Now, of course, the main thing you'll notice about this guy when thinking about the Red Wings is the fact that he is from Europe. He's from Norway. He's playing in Sweden, but it is interesting to see Norwegian prospects go out there and make names for themselves because you don't normally see many guys be taken from this nation. The Red Wings themselves have a pretty good European connection. I mean, they took Sider in 2019, Raymond in 2020, Edvinson the year after that, and then they mixed it up with the Austrian Marco Casper before heading over to Canada to take Nate Danielson, but then also going with Axel Sandin Pelica. So if you're keeping track of the Euros, a bunch of dudes from Sweden, a German, an Austrian dude, some Canadians thrown in there, and then you have this. Michael Branson Newgard from Norway. Take a look at his point production this season. He had 12 points in 7 games played with the Mora IK Junior team, but 18 points in 41 games played in the All Svenskan Mora IK team. He also had 10 points in 12 games in the qualifiers, which is just amazing production. Like, 18 points in 41 games does not sound like a lot, but this is an 18-year-old guy playing in a men's league already getting a solidified role. And the fact that he was a point per game in the playoffs makes things even better. Right now, he's got two goals in four games for Norway at the World Championships, and he was a point per game for Norway at the World Juniors earlier this year, too. So Michael Brand said Newgard, sure, he's not producing much against men, but the fact that he's even playing against men and holding his own is already a good thing. If you want to talk about just production, against his own age range, Brand said Newgard is doing very well. And when it comes to the way he plays and what makes him such an interesting prospect for the Red Wings, well, let's leave it over to Connor Eargood, who posted an article on the Hockey News talking about Branseg Newgard and what he could be for the Red Wings. This will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and read it. Let's go out there and read the scouting report. His name has been all over the latest mock drafts when it comes to Detroit selection. He's a well-rounded winger who excels in the physical departments of the game. His compete level is high, and he's a good defensive player. Scouting writers have also honed in on his power play ability, projecting that he could become a second unit option. When it comes to the fit, Branseg Newgard's physical play could be a boost to the Red Wings' future middle six. The Wings have prioritized defensive types like him in their most recent drafts, most notably with the selection of Marco Casper in 2022's opening round. Branseg Newgard could perhaps be a future linemate to a high-skill identity line that would fit the Red Wings' wishes to become a better defensive team in the future. At the midway point of the first round, getting a really good role player can be an effective draft strategy, even if it isn't ambitious. If all Branseg Newgard becomes is a checking presence at the NHL level, that's still a role that provides a whole lot of value at the NHL level. Think of Michael Rasmussen, for example, whose work ethic and size translated to a functional third-line presence. Molding these types of players into NHLers provides the kind of depth and versatility needed to win games. Now, the thing is, we can talk about the potential versus the guarantee a little bit later into this video, but also what I wanted to discuss was the Michael Branseg Newgard highlight reel, because this was posted onto the R Detroit Red Wings subreddit earlier yesterday. It's a video of two minutes of Michael Branseg Newgard breaking up plays in the forecheck, hustling for loose pucks, winning body positioning, and running over grown men like it's nothing. He is the best forechecker in the 2024 draft. The comments in this video all go out there and talk about the guaranteed skill you are getting out of Michael Branseg Newgard. 
just from the video alone, not even thinking about anything else, not his goal scoring, not his playmaking, not his producing, whatever. Just taking a look at the video here, he is such a good four checker. It is incredible. This guy is able to break up plays from the opposing team like it's nothing because he's always hustling out there. When the opposite team is trying to break out, Michael Brandsegg Newgard is right there on their tail trying to stick lift a guy and poke the puck away. He's got really good reach, he's got a dog attitude to him, and he's also very good defensively when he doesn't have the puck too. This is the kind of profile that if you want to talk about reliable two-way force that Steve Eiserman seems to value, think the Danielsons, the Caspers, and the like, this could very well fit into that mold. Even a Lucas Raymond is a very good defensive player. So, when it comes to the Wings and Steve Eiserman prioritizing these skills out of their first round drafted forwards, Michael Brangsag Newgard kind of checks all the boxes here. And even if he doesn't round out his scoring touch and becomes an NHL level point producer, if he's still able to play that super safe, solidified two way game while being a four checking dog for the opposition, I feel like that's a pretty good pick. Now, the other comments on this R Red Wings subreddit thread go out there and talk about the potential. Because at 15th overall, you're not really guaranteed to be getting an NHL guy at that point. I mean, for the first five, six, seven, eight picks, you could say, you should be hitting. You should be getting NHL caliber guys, and if you don't, they're considered busts. But once you get around 10, 11, 12, it's like, okay, you can take a little bit more time to develop. If you don't get an NHL player, that's unfortunate, but not the worst thing in the world. At least you didn't fumble a top 10 pick. For the Red Wings, when it comes to potential and ceiling, at 15th overall, there very well could be some guys left on the table that do have higher offensive ceilings. Cole Eiserman, if he's available, he'll have a high offensive ceiling. You have Berkeley Catton, if he's available, high offensive ceiling. TJ Ginla, you could say the same thing about him. But none of these guys, I would say, have as much safety and guarantee as a Michael Brandsag Newgard. Maybe TJ Ginla, but for Cole Eiserman, it's like, yeah, his defensive game and his off puck play is so weak. For Berkeley Catton, people talk about his size all the time, so is that really going to translate? Michael Brandsag Newgard has size, he's got four checking ability, he's got a lot of qualities that make it so that even if he doesn't produce any points, He'll be a worthwhile fourth line checking player to have on your squad. He just happens to be able to produce against his own age range in spades and also find a way to tango with older men as well. So, is there a discussion here about potential versus safety and guarantee? Absolutely. Could you say the wings have gone with the safety route more than the high swings in the past? Absolutely. Nate Danielson was not a super high-level swing. It was a lot safer. Marco Casper, you could say the same thing. Some of these other drafts have seen the Red Wings have multiple first-round picks, and you see the Red Wings kind of use their picks selectively, so one of the picks is a higher ceiling kind of guy, the other one is a bit more of a safer pick. Like Axel Sandin Pelica, for example, from last year. We said this during the time of the draft, but if you took the 9th overall Nate Danielson and the 17th overall Axel Sandin Pelica and you switched them, let's say the Wings took a ESP at 9th overall and Nate Danielson at 17, then all of a sudden everything looks amazing because wow, you swung high on a top tier talented defenseman and he's looking really good. And you also took a really good defensively minded player who's got some scoring touch with the 17th pick and he's exploded offensively as well. At the time of the draft last year, a lot of people were like, okay, why did they take Danielson at 9th? That might not have been the most high swinging pick for Stevie Y. Why'd they take this dude? But ASP was seen as a pretty big steal right off the hop. So it kind of feeds into the reputation-like conversation you can have about these prospects as to who projects to being amazing, who projects to being so-so, and the guarantee and the likelihoods of those being actually accomplished. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What are your opinions about the Red Wings targeting, drafting Michael Brangsag Newgard, a guy who could be a very good defensively-minded two-way force who forechecks like a hound, but who might not have the same offensive ceiling like a guy like Eiserman or a Berkeley Catton, both of whom are not guaranteed to being available at 15, but if they are, I wouldn't be too surprised. What are your thoughts about the safety versus upside drafting philosophy here, and where is it do you think the Wings should prioritize their selection at 15th overall? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vidisha Ash 99, and bye.